Thanks very much for GRDC for uh, letting us come and talk about Transform or Soft Fox Floor. Um, just before I start, because I'll forget at the end, I, I just want to acknowledge um, uh, quite a few people. I get to stand up here and take all the credit, but there's been a lot of people who have worked bringing Soft Fox Floor to market, <coughs> including guys like Lewis Wilson from Syro and, and Grant Heron and Melina Miles. Um, I've been working on uh, Sofox 4 now for about six years and, um, and I am and Dow are very excited about bringing this uh, new insecticide, sap feeding insecticide to the market. We really feel that it, it ticks most of the boxes, if not all of them. And uh, I'm going to speak about uh, cereal registrations today, just in the interest of time, concentrate on cereals, aphids in cereals, but it will have broad registrations in other broadacre crops and uh, cotton. Uh, what am I going to talk about? I'll just give a quick uh, overview of the pest and current control me methods and then I'll launch into soft fox floor, the attributes, uh, give an outline of the attributes, characteristics and properties that we think will make it a uh, valuable tool for growers like uh, novel mode of action, uh, efficacy on key pests and reduction of uh, virus transmission and a very good uh, beneficial profile. Uh, cereals are attacked by a wide aphid complex. Uh, for, we have uh, the Rapalosiphon species, the Vector Bali yellow dwarf virus and yellow dwarf virus. And we have these other aphids here. We have data for all, all these aphids. I'm really just going to concentrate on oat aphid in the interest of time. Aphids, how do they damage the crop? They uh, inject toxins, they transmit the viruses, Bali yellow dwarf and cereal yellow dwarf. They uh, cause stunting in the crop and reduction in yield, and they also induce uh, sooty mould growth on the honeydew. Current control methods, uh, seed dressings and foliar insecticides. Generally, uh, prophylactic seed dressings. They're uh, applied uh, up front. The NGA have done studies, Richard Daniels' group have done studies that the cost benefits of seed dressings are marginal, especially if the aphids don't show up. Uh, also, seed dressings have the problem of uh, multiple, exposing multiple generations of aphids to a declining dose of insecticide, so you have your problems inducing resistance. The current foliars of synthetic pyrethroids and OPs are very disruptive to beneficial insects as well as having, uh, and along with carbamates, perimacarb, have documented resistance in aphid species. So FOX4, what's it going to be? What is it? It's um, going to be registered as transform insecticide. Uh, it's from a new group called the sulfoxamines. That, that's not actually 100% true. The sulfoxamines have been around for a very long time, but really uh, so FOX4 is the first insecticide to be uh, commercialised out of that group. It's, uh, it's going to be registered as a 240 gram per litre suspension concentrate. That's really come about from our feedback from growers. They prefer a liquid over a granule. And uh, registration's pending. Uh, we've done everything we can as a company to, to get this stuff registered. We're, our efficacy claims have been accepted. There's no issues, it's just really waiting for Canberra to give us a rubber stamp and uh, as we know the wheels of government turn very slowly. So hopefully sometime in 2012. What is uh, so Fox Floor Transform? It uh, has excellent systemic and translaminar activity and contact activity. It works on a broad range of sap feeding insects. Practically every sap feeding insect we've tested it on, it works. Um, there is some variability in efficacy on, on thrips. I mean, they don't technically uh, suck, they, they rask and sort of soak up the juices. But we have activity on aphids and, and the bugs, the mealybug scales, and uh, there's uh, no cost resistance with any other insecticide group. As a result, we've been given our own IRAC classification, which will be 4C. Uh, the neonicotinoids, such as imidacloprid, et cetera, are 4A. Um, it has, it's fast acting, has fast contact activity. We see symptoms after about 17 minutes on the aphids. They start moving about, and I, uh, I have a few slides on that. 
Uh, I'm going to show you some data on transmission of plant viruses, targeting aphid vectors, and some, also some beneficial data. Uh, I'm, I'm really only going to talk about cereals and broadacre here, but we have broad registrations for trees and grapes, poem, poem and stone, and also uh, hort, uh, row, uh, leafy fruiting vegetables. Uh, I just stuck this slide in. Uh, this is the sulfox four registration that was trucked to Canberra. This is the, um, the amount of work that goes into registering a new compound. Um, the, the cost is around $240 million. Um, the, the efficacy trials alone cost over $100 million globally. And, and I guess this is, this is a reason to support the, the Dow's and the St. Jenner's and the Bayer's because um, a lot of the, the generic companies really just don't have the, the resources or the expertise to create a huge pile of paper like that. <laughs> Um, just a little bit about sulfox floor. It's translaminar. You treat the, the top of the leaf. You kill the aphids that are underneath the, the leaf. You treat the bottom half of a plant. It moves up in the xylem. It's xylem mobile, so it'll treat any new growth or, or, or growth above the treated area. Also, if you put it in a pot, you treat the soil. You allow the sulfox floor to go up into the plant, put it in a new pot. It, it still moves around and protects new growth. Uh, here's some data from uh, Grant Heron just demonstrating no cross resistance with uh, field strains. This is seven dose responses for seven different strains of uh, cotton aphid. Six of them were field collected and had known nicotinic resistance and some carbamate resistance as well. And the uh, one susceptible lab strain, which is the, the square, uh, the, the see through squares. So you can see from the graph that there's no significant difference or essentially numerical difference between the, the resistant strains. And this really uh, justifies our IRAC classification of 4C. Um, just some uh, scientific jargon, I guess. Um, it works at the uh, nicotinic acetylchlorine receptor. It, it, it's the same receptor as the other neonicotinoids, but because the fox floor is structurally unique, there's no cross Res, uh, resistance at the target site, and there's no metabolism in resistant insects. A couple of happy snaps. What we did here was we infested broccoli seedlings with cabbage aphids and then sprayed them with sulfox floor. This is the, the cereal rate that will be registered. And then we've got some white catching trays showing all the uh, black cabbage aphids that are falling off. This is six hours after application, 24 hours after application. See the uh, pile of dead aphids has got a lot bigger. One slide on symptoms. We have happy uh, green peach aphids on the left and uh, unhappy ones on the right. This is one hour after application and two hours. The uh, symptoms, and you, you'll probably be able to see this in the paddock, they, um, they start, they pull up, they stop feeding after about 17 minutes. Their antennae start uh, twitching and they, they be, eventually become inverted and thrash around until they uh, die. Um, this is on page 114 of your, your notes. Here's some data uh, on oat aphid, repellisiphon padi. One trial from Queensland. This is trials from 2008. Uh, one trial from Queensland, another one from New South Wales. And they're really under high, this is number of aphids per tiller. So very high pressure. And really um, the take home message is that all the treatments gave very good control of oat, oat aphids. In some cases, sulfox floor was slightly superior to the standards uh, in knockdown and residual, and in some cases, it, they were slightly inferior. Really, um, we didn't have any, this is uh, 2009 data, Queensland and New South Wales. Um, we didn't have any OP resistant or SP resistant strains in the um, trials, so you know, we had you know, the old standard of dimethylate working very well in the trials. Uh, this is some uh, Baliella dwarf virus data. We, uh, we spent a lot of money. We've tried 20 odd trials trying to get uh, some data showing that if you apply it to the vectoring aphids, you reduce the um, infection of Baliella dwarf virus. This is really all we've got for our cash. We've uh, two trials from New Zealand. The blue trial shows a significant reduction in transmission and the uh, green trial where there was no significant reduction. Um, 
This is some data from cucumber mosaic virus. I'm sure you guys don't really care about cucumber mosaic virus, but it really shows proof of uh, concept. In this trial, there was uh, seven applications of, of transform plus spirotetramide and pyrimetrazine, and then they rated the incidence of virus seven days after each application. And you can see here that transform has significantly reduced the uh, infection. And, and we really feel that we, we haven't been able to prove it yet, so I'll put that disclaimer in, but we really feel there's more than just killing the aphids. We really feel there's an anti uh, anti feed, uh, some sort of deterrency going on. Uh, here's a uh, sterilised version of the broadacre label. Uh, it'll be registered for cereals and canola and soybeans, forage brassicas. Here's our cereal rate, 50 to 100 mils, uh, a canola rate of 100 to 200 mils, and then your hort and your cotton rate. We're going to have label claims for, for myriads in cotton. Uh, suppression for uh, green veggie bug, it won't be on the label, but some trials it works very well, some trials, trials it doesn't, so we're not going to label. And then a high rate for any white fly. All right, this is my padding out slide, if I was doing all right. <laughs> this is uh, turnip aphid in canola. It was applied at two water volumes, 30 litres and 100 litres. This is really just to simulate aerial application. And uh, you can see we've got sulfoxiflora transform at our two label rates versus our standard, which is perimacarb. And you can see here very good activity. Uh, and we'll have uh, registrations for green peach and cabbage aphid in canola as well. Uh, it'll be registered aerial for, aerially for cereals, canola and cotton. Okay, so really in summary, um, you know, we feel that sulfoxiflora will be a valuable tool for growers and consultants as a, a new mode of action, as a rotation mode of action. We'll give very good control of uh, sap feeding insects, reduction in virus transmission with minimal impact on beneficial insects. So we really, we're excited about it. I'm excited about it. Um, we, we feel it ticks most of the boxes. Yeah, what about green feature? Uh, yeah. Uh, it's an interest of time, I and mean, we have data on all, all the, uh, not all aphid species, but green peach aphid is absolutely fantastic. Um, it'll have registrations for cotton, veggies, canola, for green peach. Green veggie bug, you said you've got some activity. Uh, would it have more activity on different nymphal stages? Yeah, what have you found? we've got a limited bucket of money. Um, really, we can't sort of home in on every question. Um, my gut feeling is yes, it's probably more activity on nymphs than adults. Uh, we've done four trials to date, and we had one that worked very, very well, and the rest were so-so. So, you know, Dow's a very conservative company. If we put something on our label, we've got to be pretty confident, so it won't be on the label. So, uh, here's the cost of it I know you're an R&D, but you've always said anything about cost. It'll be competitively priced. Um, I, I guess we're not going to spend 240 million bucks registering a product and then bring it into a market that no one's going to can afford. So, competitively priced. But then again, we have to fill that big hole that we just <laughs> dug as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, see, interest of time. Um, the guys, the sales guys, will be rolling out some uh, launch presentations in cotton. So, yeah, uh, very good activity on mirrors. It's definitely on the label. The big driver for this in the US is Ligus bug. Uh, they've run out of options, so they've got a lot of resistance problems, and uh, it's fantastic on Ligus bug as it is on green mirrors. And, and we also feel that's where we're getting this anti feeding thing coming from. We're seeing plots that are clean and that have had sprays for green mirrors. So will it have rego on green mirrors? Uh, no. No, soybeans. Uh, I have a note to look into that. Um, it's, a, it's a case of doing residue work and which sort of crop, crop groupings we can get. Hugh Reedens, uh, not Hugh Reedens, Smith, he's Senator, Hugh Breyer <laughs> is, um, is going to do some work to generate some efficacy data for us on mirrors. And, and how much um, residual activity are you getting? Sorry, I'm probably in the data there, but I just... Yeah, um, it, when we do our trial work, it's difficult to distinguish between residual control and lack of reinfestation. So, uh, in some of our trials, 32 days, we've had it out to 32 days. 
I wouldn't be confident standing in front of so many people in front of a camera and saying, <laughs> 32 days. <laughs> so um, I would feel confident about saying about 14 to 21 days.